Okay, let's talk about using temperature calculations and temperature units in MathCAD. If you just stick to using Kelvin all the time, just capital K, you don't really have any problems. The problems come in when you deal with degrees Celsius. And here's the reason for it. If I tell you 20 degrees Celsius, and I say, what's that in Kelvin? You go, okay, Neil, that's, I can do that. Um, let me see, zero Celsius is 273 Kelvin, so 20 more, 293. 20 Celsius equals 293 Kelvin, and that would be very true. But what if I said that the 20 degrees Celsius that I was talking about, I didn't mean it was a temperature of the room or something. I meant it was a change in temperature. For instance, if I told you, told you that the room is 20 degrees warmer today than it was yesterday, that 20 degrees Celsius warmer, what's that in Kelvin? It's not 293 anymore, is it? It's 20 Kelvin. 20 Celsius as a temperature change is 20 Kelvin as a temperature change. 20 Celsius as an actual temperature is 293 Kelvin. They're not the same thing, so MathCAD has two different ways for dealing with degrees Celsius. There's a delta degrees Celsius unit for changes, and just a degree Celsius, which would be well enough, if not a little confusing, but it gets worse because that uh, degree Celsius isn't actually a unit, it's a function. Don't worry about what that means, just has implications for how we have to actually use it. So let's try an example. Let's say that what we have is a bar of steel that's one meter long. Length is one meter. And I would like it to get longer by one millimeter, and I want to do it by heating it up. That's fair enough. That'll happen. Let's say I want the thermal expansion, delta G dot T, to be one millimeter. The coefficient of thermal expansion of the bar steel matters. Let's say it's equal to um, 16.9 times 10 to the power of minus 6 times 1 over K, 1 Kelvin. So this is the amount of strain we get for every temperature change of 1 Kelvin. It's a material constant that you would look up for the material. Um, so we don't know what delta T will give us this, right? There is some thermal change, some amount of heating that will take my one meter bar and make it one millimeter longer. I don't know what that change in temperature is. More than that, I want to know what the final temperature is. If the initial temperature, T dot I, is defined as 20 degrees Celsius, this is where it gets a little tricky. Here's how you do it. If I just type in 20 and then insert the unit for degrees Celsius, it doesn't quite work. Let me try it. 20. I happen to know that to get a degree sign, it's Alt 0176 on your keyboard, and then C. How did I know that? I just know that. It's one of a few things that I know. Alt 0176, but it's got to be on the numeric keypad, not the one across the top. Anyway, that should work, and it doesn't. So let's try this again. 20, let's try the insert temperature unit function. Let's go down and get the temperature units. And here, here we have them. Eh? Here's our change in temperature and our temperature in degrees Celsius or change degrees Celsius. It has similar things for Fahrenheit as well. I could insert this and hope for the best. The one that's the actual, not the change, but the actual temperature. But when you do, it does something very strange. What's this? Call 5? I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's something to do with the fact that this isn't properly a unit. It's a function. Anyway, you could delete this nonsense, and that actually does fix it. It's okay now. I can tell it's okay because I'm going to evaluate t dot i now, just equals, and it is. It gives it to you by default in Kelvin. I could change that Kelvin now to Alt 0176 C, and that works. 20 degrees Celsius. It's 20 degrees Celsius. We succeeded. There's a, a slightly better way to do it, I think. And that is to just type in t dot i colon. This is where it's a little strange. To put in this function, you hit Control Shift X, Control Shift X, and you get two boxes. The first is for the number. The second one is for the function. It's called a a, um, a postfix function. It's a number and then a function. Um, Okay, well the function is Alt 0176 C and, and, and that works. That that's okay. But you have to do that shift control X, control shift X thing to do that. Okay, we've got that. Uh, the equation that matters here is um, thermal expansion 
delta sub t is equal to alpha coefficient of thermal expansion times the temperature change big delta t times the initial length that's the equation I know this is one millimeter I know this is its material constant value I don't know delta d that's what I'm actually after I know the length is one meter well I'm gonna symbolic variable solve to get an equation for my delta t make that into the definition so colon d g greekified and evaluate it and there's the temperature change I need if I have a one meter bar and I wish it was a millimeter longer I have to heat it up about 60 Kelvin 59 Kelvin or if you wanted I could heat it up 59 degrees Celsius both is the same thing they're the same temperature change if I take this though and I change this from Kelvin to alt 0176 C it should still be the same number but it isn't is it let's undo this then because 59 Kelvin that's pretty cold as an actual temperature a change of 59 Kelvin is one thing 59 Kelvin is only 59 above absolute zero it's pretty cold it's minus 200 something Celsius so if I want to express this temperature change in Celsius I mustn't use just Celsius I have to use this Delta C function see that that works and evaluate delta T in Kelvin. Give me the decimals. And I can make a copy of it and show delta T in um, delta degrees. But if I show it in just degrees, it's wrong. A temperature change of 59 Celsius is the same as a temperature change of 59 Kelvin. That's not the same as minus 214 Celsius. You see that? For changes, you have to use delta degrees C. For actual temperatures, just degrees C. If you stick to Kelvin all the time, you don't have this trouble at all. So this is no good. This is okay, and this is okay. It means I can now get my final temperature, which is going to be equal to my initial temperature, plus this change in temperature which should be well let me see 20 degrees Celsius warming up by 59 that should be about 79 shouldn't it that's our final temperature in Kelvin put it in degrees Celsius and there we go a little confusing and I'm sorry for it but it does have a good reason and this is how you manage it uh, if you want, you can look in um, MathCAD um, tutorials. There is one about this. Uh, I'm not sure where to get it, though. Just do MathCAD help. And if you search for temperature, under the unit conversion help there is a thing down here about uh, a tutorial about temperature units you might want to have a look at that and uh, see if you need some more help that, that might be where you need to go okay it explains this whole thing about the post fix operator and the control shift X to put this in. So you can kind of work through this if you want a little more practice and a little more help with this. And I hope that helps.